What's up guys? So today is December 23rd, Friday. This is the day that we had some crappy weather hit uh, pretty much the whole east side. Well, pretty much the whole country far as I know. I'll warn you, I ain't chipper today. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right guys, so today is not a good day. It's uh, Friday and it is negative six degrees out. So it was 47 degrees. It literally was no snow, anything yesterday. Got a no heat call up here on the roof. Oh yeah. Well, that one seems to be working. I think it's a Linux over here that took a dump. If that's number three, that one appears to be running. Yep, it's warm. And a handy dandy carrier. Well, you can tell we've sucked in quite a bit of crap. As usual, nobody labels anything. It's labeled down on the thermostat, but not up here. That's putting out heat. Is it not blowing? Is this even it? I don't know. Look how strong that one is versus that one. I've worked on the cooler here and that's about it. That's running. Burners look like they're running. They don't look as strong as what they should be. Flame sensor looks dirty like it's got red stuff on it. It really don't look like it's going as fast as it should. Don't even know if this is the one. Good enough till we find out what we're doing. We're gonna have to go find, find out where unit three is because these aren't labeled. None of them are labeled. It is blowing some heat, just not a whole lot of heat. It's not cold. So, but it's not real warm. It's about gotta be it. I went up on the roof right out through there. So this actually seemed like this would be, yeah, see that's cool, it's nothing major. So what it seems to me from the hatch to here, it's gotta be the train unit. Here goes the dock work. It looks like it's going that direction. Can't be for certain, but that one seems like it's running. The burners look weak, but this one over here seems to be running too, so do we have a belt issue? Let's find out. I mean, she's a slipping, but not as bad as it could be. Why does that coil look like it's wet? Because the air conditioner's running. Either the air conditioner's running or we're sucking in cold air from outside. Gotta love it. I know it's sucking in exhaust fumes. It's diluted, it'll be all right. When it's six degrees, negative six out here, I'm not wasting a shit ton of time on stupid stuff. We're gonna tighten the belt up. We're not gonna do it the exact perfect way. Okay, let's check to see if the air conditioner's running or what's going on or if the economizer's open. That coil felt really, really cold. And like I said, it seems to be pumping out heat, but the uh, air must not be very, must be getting conditioned by the outside air. That's what it really seems like. Yeah, we had hellacious snow, or ice and snow and rain last night. December 23rd is where we're at, 2022. We're definitely sucking some outside air in. That don't help us a whole lot, does it? When you got negative six degree temperatures and the economizer's that far open, somebody cranked it open because of the pandemic thing we had. Everybody's worried about getting fresh air in the building. When it gets down to temperatures like this, it finds every flaw in the whole building. See if we can find the minimum position. We 
go. I think that's it. Oh. That's a lot close, more close than what it was. All right. Let's see how it feels downstairs now. We're, uh, everything I normally would do, all the extra stuff, clean flame sensors and all that. Nope, not today. Can all come back for it. Yeah, half the, half everybody not here today. Oh, AX37, that's still not it. Good as it's gonna get. Oh yeah, I can feel that nice and warm there. I'm pretty sure this is the right way. All right. Uh, not as warm as what that one back here was. Yeah, rooftop three. So down to 59. Probably because of the All right, so we're going to check the uh, check the duct temperature, see if it's raising up, because it's hard to tell. I, I mean, that, that has to travel all the way across and around to get to the area where it's warm at. So up there, we got since uh, 98. I got 97 there. I mean, this is debatable whether this is part of that one or not that I worked on. Now here it's 70s. And we have 81 right there, 86. This, I'm pretty sure this was the one I first looked at and it wasn't warm. 76, as you just see, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel warm to me because skin temperature. Let's see, was it 58 earlier? And that's off by a little bit anyway. Let's see where we're set at. That's weird. 76, holy crap. All right, we watched it for a little while. We're at 86 area. It's already came up another degree, so we've got it. This must be the one. Um, yeah, I'd write train unit on the front of it if I thought it would help, but yeah, we're not. All right, well, we're gonna head on to the next call. Guys, this is why I have a camera in the truck. You can show them how they just about lost their employee and the truck. Bob got hit head on by a semi. Watch out, this thing's not to be trusted. All right, gotcha. Yeah, a really steep old yeah, a little bit. Fun experiences. And... All right, let's tear into this old ream, 90 percenter. Three inch to two inch on the way out. Almost seems pointless, but that's how they did it. Let's take a look here. Let's see what kind of filter we got. Always gotta love it when they bring a return air in like that. That just ends up hitting only half of the filter. It just kicked on. You can hear the draft motor having a real good old time there. It's getting ready to go out. Because these were so bad about getting air from the outside that people usually just pop those out on these. Especially when you're down here in a basement like this. Let's get this thing opened up. I have a feeling this is a flame scent issue. Flame sense issue. We made a sound that it was not establishing faint flame. We do got Romex wire, so at least it should have a ground. Got to steal a common. Wow. I don't miss this part. Usually I'll just jump the thermostat. I don't trust the freaking thing. And that usually lets you know if you got an issue with it or not. There's your air conditioner. That's, look at it, it's looser than a goose. That's loose. That's loose. They're all freaking loose. All right. That don't sound good at all. Yeah, 
bearings are going out. It's really nice. We got it jumped out. We got some sort of problem down here. One, two. All right, number two comes back as pressure switches open. These were notorious for not closing. Blow that one out. That one there tends to do right off the draft motor. The other one goes to the pressure switch to the heat exchanger and then usually this here potentially could be frozen. I mean, it's definitely not warm in here at all. Um, problem with the 90 percenter is having it in a place where it's not conditioned space. So we don't put them up in attics and stuff like that. Uh, unless you're going to heat tape them and even then you're really asking for trouble. And that's open too. All right. Well, I'm going to go potentially outside and check that. Um, we can blow through that. Let's see if I can get my pliers on there. Okay, let's pull this off. Usually what happens is it plugs up with condensate and it doesn't want to drain. Sounds like somebody got glue all over. Let's see if water comes flying out. It seems like somebody glued a sucker on. able to blow that out. Good. That means that'll help drain. Alright, let's go outside and see if there's something in the exhaust stack. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just pull it up. Let's see if it'll fire with it disconnected. If it'll fire with it disconnected, then we know that something in the exhaust stack. Kind of simple as that. Obviously, you can't leave it like this unless you want to die. It's not blinking two times. Let's see whether it fires or not. Yep, there it goes. All right, so it's firing. But as soon as we plug this back in, then we want to make sure we clean the uh, flame sensor. Another thing we run into sometimes is when uh, fuel uh, regular or the um, gas meter outside they'll freeze up sometimes. Man that thing sounds horrible. Yeah he needs a new furnace. I'm gonna spray some oil on it. Looks like somebody already has. That's gonna be the next thing. The motor's gonna go off on thermal overload because it's gonna overheat. Let's see if I can get a picture of this model number. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do much with them. Okay, so it just dropped out there for no good reason. So I think the draft motor's going out on it. I'm gonna go outside and see. I mean, it could be just the something in the actual draft motor too which we can take off but man oh man i think it's just freaking junk it needs a new one so i just looked inside there at the uh at the heat exchanger it seems like it's all right i don't know if anybody's gonna have one of these motors or not they might i'm gonna go outside and check the exhaust all right so got the wind this thing screams hack job. Yeah. Air intake. Not too bad, but like I said, it's pulling air from inside the house. Feels like it's running. I'm gonna go grab my uh, can of oil and see what we can do to maybe oil this thing up. All right, so I sprayed a little oil in there. It's, it's not squealing now, but that's just a temp fix, and it's been dropping out. Uh, flame sensor wouldn't surprise me if it's, like I said, dirty. 
watch it for a minute. There's just so many things wrong with this. Flame's staying good. The yellow light down there usually is for the flame. So we're good on that. I'm gonna clean this up anyway. Gotta love them. That actually ain't too horribly dirty. Not too horribly bad. Yeah, this thing goes into a complete shutdown when it gets, uh, goes into an air of some sort. Bad thing is we got motor and I wonder if we got other issues with the heat exchanger. It's kicking back on again. To you, tell you something too on these old ones, the put the pressure switch in line with the gas valve. So that will totally throw you off if you're looking for a pressure switch fault. However, this pressure switch is actually on the pressure switch um, circuitry to tell you that's what's the problem. So I actually use liquid wrench because it's actually got oil in it. It's an actual penetrating oil. It's obviously no uh, solution to re versus replacing the draft motor. Getting the front bearings are going to be a real bear. I didn't, I really didn't try to get to it. I didn't even get it. So we've got other issues. So we gotta go grab the manometer and try to get that. See if that's the problem. Or see which switch is not closing. It's gonna have to be this one right here. So it's not even calling all the time. Let's go upstairs and find out what's going on with the thermostat. All right, so he it says it's been making that squawk noise for a while and just wants to get it to go run, make it warm, whatever. This is an Ecobee, went upstairs. It was calling, but there's some locks on it and things like that that's slowing things down. So let's go ahead and zero it. Okay, for giggles, it's, I'm gonna cheat here and just kind of pull right on the, we're pulling two inches and that is only rated for, Normally I put my T in there, 1.3. Looks like a 1.3 to me. So it should be pulling in. So either way, it sounds like we're gonna have to go get a freaking switch. And I used my universal switch and nobody ordered me a new one like I asked for. So there's a lot of, oh, it looks like corrosion down there in there. Let's, um, Check it with the meter, and see if it's closing. Hopefully it'll short out. It's closed. So it should be, well, let's tell you what, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and see if it opens when we remove it. I have a pressure checker on this meter of mine, uh, on my uh, manometer. I'll unplug it. It's undone, so it's it's working. It's obviously got an issue with the with the switch. Basic troubleshooting here. Okay, look. So we've got. Let's see here. That stupid that stupid eco beast dinking around, not giving me a call. Yeah, they got four wires here. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. There's corrosion down here in it. That's why you wouldn't lay that right down there in the bottom. That's nice. So we got multiple problems starting up. Okay, there. We get to the metal now. Got 23 volts on that one. 24. 25, whatever there. And measuring across it should have none. I have none. So right now it should be closing. And it should be calling and running. And there it goes. Well, looks to me we need to get a new pressure switch. And I really don't feel good about that that thing here. It's got corrosion down there in it. What's happened, condensation or whatever has dripped down onto it. Should have mounted it up over here, away from all that crap. All right, kick back on. We're doing uh, negative 2.1. It's ready for 1 point, or 1.3. Or plenty there. It's running now. So I would feel a lot better 
if we had a better pressure switch on there. Also, if that could be, it would work like it's supposed to instead of having to be jumped out. They should have just ran a new damn five wire instead of all that extra crap. On the point where, how much effort would it have taken to rain a wire from here over to the crawl space and up the wall? Now it may be damaged, may not even be able to use it. So you got multiple issues I think going on here. Yeah, look at all that nice corrosion there. So they got themselves a relay in there. Let's see if maybe we can clear some of this corrosion off of the pins. Because all you guys a diode, you got two. Looks like, see the capacitors? Got two capacitors here. The disc things look like, uh, looks like MOV, little miniature metal oxide resistors to absorb spikes and shit. And see all that corrosion there. I have a feeling you're not gonna be able to get old to nobody. It's the weekend. Christmas is sat Sunday. What I can do, switch this pressure switch for this one, bypass that, that more or less make sure that the secondary doesn't get gummed up and then order the other one to come back and put it on. Otherwise it's it's a no go. Hello, you have All right, so the supply house has one. It's gonna take over an hour and something to go get it and come back because it's the distance away. And so I am going to put the other switch on there and get it going while I wait while I'm gone they can have some heat bringing up the temperature in here and I'll switch it back when I get back uh, instead of destroying the um, little crimps I just left them so we'll deal with that when we get back this will be good enough to protect it for us making sure it's running and obviously in the range that they want but that will work until then do not bypass a pressure switch for any reason. Um, only because of what we're doing is the only reason why I'm doing this. And it's still not 100% unprotected. It'll be good enough to get them going until I get back. That'll keep them running. It'll also give me a chance to see if that thermostat's gonna stay running. I'll see if maybe they have a wire eliminator kit like that for that thing too while I'm there. Otherwise, he's got to pay us to run the wire, and I'm not running wire today. I'll run a thermostat and set it in the ductwork. And then we'll set it. What the hell? Damn electricity went off. That's nice. Well, hopefully it kicks on. See if I would have just jumped it. They would have just tripped out, and as soon as it went to restart, they would have known that it was jumped and it wouldn't have happened. The draft motor seems like it's okay. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so we're back. We have a new pressure switch here. Another one made in Costa Rica. Comes with uh, wires. Bracket. Little jumper thing. Um, they said it's been running since I left, which is good, because it's 55 up there, so it's getting a little warmer. Uh, the... Uh, adapter thing i found one from honeywell but i bought it but unfortunately it says it won't work with that you have to use the eco b1 let the old eco b start all over again you can see it's putting the water out Draining down there. That's good. If this thing ever kicks on here, we can get going. All right. The draft motor started. It's running. And everything's back the way it was. Not really the way I like it, but I mean, the whole furnace is just beyond ready to be replaced. I mean, this thing's at least 20 plus years old. better days and then they already got that popped out so if the intake gets plugged up it's just gonna pull up from here and the way this basement is 
it's not going to hurt for it to pull any air from down here. It's almost pointless to even have it to begin with. With, with this is pretty much all open down below down here. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up. It's uh, 442 Friday, December 23rd. Let's call it a wrap. Later.